Hey, this is the InDesign Helper, and today we are going to talk about the selection tool. The selection tool is similar to Photoshop and Adobe, but if you don't know them or you don't use them, that's perfectly fine. We're going to get started right now. So the selection tool is right over here. This is going to be the first tool. You can either use V or Escape. So what's going to happen is it's like any other tool in Photoshop. If you use it where you click, you can move and navigate. You could change the position. You could change the size. You could rotate it. You could rotate it if you want. But you see, a lot of people don't know is that you could do that stuff over here at the top of the toolbar. So we're gonna quickly go over the important parts of this toolbar. Right over here, you have this. This is the reference point. The reference point is where everything starts. Think of it as the middle. So technically it's not, it could be in the middle like how it is right now, but this reference point can be anywhere. And you'll see the importance of this reference point. The reference point shows could show show us where it moves from so if I have it in the middle and this is the X and Y axis this is where it's located in the document if I were to increase the X axis it would move in distance from the middle but if we were to put it up in the corner you'll see a difference of how it moves so this is the X and this is the Y axis. This is left and right, and this is up and down, just for, just so you know. Over here we have the width and the height. The width and the height is basically what it is. If you're seeing that it's a P, that means picas. I'll make a separate video on how to change those units, but really, Picas is just another measurement. It's actually one of the smallest measurement of units that we use in InDesign. You could also click this link to constrain that size. So if I were to increase the width or the height, it would be in relation to the other one. Over here would be scaling it. And I could take this off take this off and now I will be changing it on, in, on individually but usually I just use the width and the height over here you have the angle now this is where you definitely see the difference where the reference point is over here this is me changing the angle or rotation as you can see is moving in the corner why is that it's because our reference point is in the corner. If we were to move our reference point in the middle and minus this, you would see the plane of rotation is different. And this is really helpful for when you're wanting to experiment and play around. Over here, we have shearing. So what it does, it basically turns our shape into a parallelogram and distorting and shifting it. It has the same points. It's technically the same shape, but it's just distorted. And we could always change it back. Here, these are just default rotations, turning it clockwise or counterclockwise, 90 degrees. And you can see the position of the actual image. And you could flip it vertically or horizontally and of course this is dependent on the reference point then we have changing the actual color if you want a custom color you could go down here these are the different colors if you're looking for white just click paper don't click none none means there's nothing and you don't click register you just click paper or black Paper is white. Always remember that. And then you have your stroke here. You have the size of that stroke. So let's make this black. So you can see that. 
this is the size of the stroke. This is the type of stroke that's being used. This is to apply effects. This could be to the, to the object, to the stroke, or to fill. This is adding a drop shadow. These are the effects that you could use. Similar to Photoshop, you have drop shadow, inner shadow, outer glow, inner glow, bevel and emboss, um, satin, basic feathering, directional feathering, and gradient feathering. Then you have your opacity. And this is how it's interacting with all the other text. So this is none, so which means that it could move along and it won't affect it. It could go around, you know. So if I put this in the middle, it'll move in the middle. I could change this to jump object. Or I could change it to here. It wraps around. Now you won't see much changes because this is just a basic standard text block. But if we were to make more complex designs, this would be very important. And over here is the corners. And this is how rounded the corners are or how much of the effect of the corners are. So if I pick rounded, you would see that it just, it gets more rounded, but I could also pick fancy, bevel, insert or inverse for, and it shows it right here. And that's how you use the selection tool. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be making the next video. So check it out over here and I'll see you then.